So what is the sheet clay? Well, the term is used to define a reproduction, a digital reproduction of artwork using digital media and inkjet printing, basically. And the name originally applied to the fine art prints that they made on that iris 3047, but has since then come to mean any high-end inkjet print. And the term is used by artists and galleries and print shops to denote a high-quality fine art print. So let me just interject at this point that this is different from your desktop, desktop printers that you have at home because they use dye-based inks and these printers use pigmented-based inks which have the longevity that you need you know, for fine art. You want to be able to last 25, 50, or 100 years before you get any noticeable fading. Whereas your desktop printers using dye-based inks, I know from my uh, experience hanging my kids' photos on my refrigerator, sometimes even after three or four months, they'll, they'll start fading. So, I want to go over this uh, Giclée workflow uh, briefly, and I think this is a good way of uh, leading us through the presentation of the terminology and the information we want to go through today. So, we're basically talking about artwork and photography, um, and that's, you know, the people who come in here are artists and, and photographers. And a photographer will come in with their digital files, typically on a CD or on a uh, USB drive or on their camera or some means. And so then that goes directly into to prep, where we get it on our computer, we look at it, and we try to evaluate the color, we're just going to print the way uh, uh, the photographer expects it to, you know, we size it up for printing. And then it goes into our print department, and we go into making a proof. Now, if an artist comes in, they may be walking in, you know, with a canvas, a piece of artwork, or watercolor, or pastel, or whatever, pencil drawing, whatever it might be. And then we, we have to digitally capture that to get it into the computer to work with it and to print it. So we do one of two things. We do a digital capture using my high-end digital camera, uh, 21 megapixel camera, or we have a flatbed scanner, and I'm going to talk about each of those options in a little bit. So here we have an artist arriving with her artwork. She walks in the front door and she's got her uh, pastel there. Some of you may have recognized her. And here we have uh, the artwork on my easel in my photography area. We have two umbrellas and we have the camera on the stand. And um, uh, the camera that I have is uh, very good at reproducing color, capturing the correct color. And I have a little gray scale in here. And usually I write down the size of the picture so later on we know how big it is. And afterwards we know how to get on the screen. So we digitally capture it, we get it on the camera, and then uh, we bring it into our print room. Now I just wanted to show this to show all the different ways that people bring photos to us if they already have it in digital format. You know, they can bring in, some people bring in their cameras, they bring in their compact flash cards. Um, there are quite a variety of ways of bringing in it. Some people can come in with their iPhones or their iPads. I can hook up my computer and, and in Lightroom I can pull off those images and we can, we can use them. So here we are prepping the files and this is an example of that same piece, uh, piece of artwork. And uh, here on the computer, I'm looking at uh, how it looks on the screen. I'm looking at the original, and I have a color balance light next to my computer. That's an odd light, and that uh, matches uh, the light you know, coming from the sun. It's daylight balanced. And that's important, too, in how you uh, evaluate color is your, your light source that you're using. How do you use that? Yep. What do you I know what an odd light is. I use one. But oh, OK. How does it mean that you use it? Right, well not shown here to the left, I have my odd light and I have the original right next to the computer. Oh, so, you're color testing so I'm comparing with my eye how it looks, the original versus oh, on the screen. Okay. Okay. And usually we're, we're pretty close, but sometimes some colors will be a little bit off. Uh, I find that the yellows aren't quite spot on, you know, and I can adjust those, make any adjustments that I need to make. And then I have my, uh, my little gray scale in here. And, uh, um, artwork's a little bit different than photographs. And photographs, you know, if you study Ansel Adams, you're looking for a white point and a black point, you know, in the full tonal range. But I find with artwork, you don't have a full tonal range usually. Um, the blacks aren't pitch black, you know, they're not pure black. Usually they have some uh, color or tint to it. You know, painters are taught that they don't use pure black because you get reflections from the sky and maybe there's a dark blue, but it's not really pure black or, or some other shade. Um, and usually the whites aren't pure white, so I've, I've learned over the years how to adjust 
artwork, you know, it's different than you would do um, most of photographs. Yes? What do you do when you haven't got either a black point or a white point in the photograph? Okay, good question. Well, I look by eye and I compare the original to my screen, and usually, um, usually I have all the information, if you're used to looking at histograms, some of you know what I'm talking about, the photographers, that usually my camera has captured all the information is the, is in, that's in the, in, the, in the scene, and then I can adjust my white and black point by, by pulling them in, but on paintings I don't do that because I know there's not a pure white point usually or a pure black point. So um, I don't adjust it that way as I would as a photographer usually, and um, I'm comparing it to the original so I can see how it looks. All right, so I'm adjusting colors needed, adjusting the tonal range. Uh, I size the image for printing, and we add the gallery wrap for canvas. And uh, Kate does a lot of that work uh, here too. She's I don't know if she's still here, but she's still here. Yeah. And Kate um, is really great in setting up a lot of the artwork for for printing. This is Kate, and she's great at uh, retouching photographs and doing restorations. A lot of photo restorations here. 